Bentley, it's one that will begin today's edition of this special program, which is focused on the game between Cameroon, between Tunisia and Cameroon, that will take place tomorrow in Rades, Morocco. And first, just to tell you that uh, news over there is saying that Ali Bedimon, of course, Gaetan Bong, are totally out of the game because of uh, the injury concerns. And of course, we're equally hearing that uh, over there, uh, the Lions are quite upbeat despite the fact that two of theirs uh, have been ruled out of the because of injury. And now the coach, Volker Finger, is now trying to see who can replace that left fullback position. And he says that he's going to have a very difficult game beginning somebody. But we hope that uh, uh, in the course of the program, we shall get our experts to tell us who might, uh, who can, who could uh, right li likely get into that position on the field. And of course, we're quite hearing that uh, the, the, the Tunisian public <laughs> very much wants their team against ex all expectation wants the Tunisian team to be, li to be eliminated because they feel that there's been a lot of corruption over there so that these after the elimination the Tunisian government can ban or can, dis uh, 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 can disband the football federation so that they can solve their matters. Anyway, those were just distractions that are taking place over there but we hear from our correspondents there the Lions are doing quite fine ahead of their game. Now, Tunisia versus Cameroon are all, it's an old feature in the game of football. 13 times two, two teams have met at the various levels of uh, international competitions. And Cameroon has always had the upper hand, winning eight times and the Tunisian three times. And of course, before today's game, tomorrow's game, we cornered one of our experts, one of our football analysts. He's called Samson Fabian. I asked him, we begin by asking him, Fabian, you've, watched, you've been hearing about the Lions training, you've got the echoes about the Lions training. Do you think the Lions? are quite ready for tomorrow's battle. From the point of view of uh, sports, from the point of view of um, management, I think uh, the team is ready. Uh, but uh, somehow one is a bit, one could be disturbed to say that because of uh, some of the uh, political maneuvers that have been surrounding the team, but, but I, don't, I don't see how that is going to affect the team because uh, 180 minutes away from a World Cup competition, I think most of these players with their level of experience and their knowledge of the game and uh, major competitions like the World Cup and the Nations Cup, I think they would, they would be boosted you know, to want to be uh, in the World Cup. I think they want to beat Tunisia in this game. With the f several injuries that we, uh, we had, uh, the players had, well, uh, there's a likely, uh, likely with that guys like uh, 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 Gaetan Bong and of course uh, uh, Bidimo will be out. Yeah. And of course, we're hearing that Idris Muhammadu, who has scored eight goals with Kaiser Lawton, might be in, and even Frank Van Banyak might be giving his first, uh, his first card. Yes, for the defense, I think um, it would be a welcome relief to see another face on that left flank of the defense. Maybe the defense, maybe Frank Banyak with his, um, uh, his experience in Barcelona, even though he's not a first team player, uh, could bring something from the Barcelona Academy. Maybe that is something uh, God wants to happen for Cameroon, so that some, we see some fresh air, we get some freshness in that defense, where, which has more or less been stereotyped with uh, Gaetan Bong and Bedimo, you know, that their kind of style, which some people describe as carpenter-like, you know, run, run, and then you cross. No finesse like we used to have uh, with um, Omeland, uh, Olembe, and the rest, you know. Maybe uh, God wants that to come into, into, into the Cameroonian team again. Now, uh, talking about Muhammadu, I, I don't think, for Christ's sake, I don't think, even if Muhammadu would, was the leading goal scorer in Germany today, I think he has played his time. Mohamedou is, is over 30. There's, he's not bringing anything new to the, uh, to the national team. He has, I, I, I don't remember Mohamedou scoring a goal for Cameroon. He scores in Germany, he scores wherever he plays. But for Christ's sake, people should be serious. Mohamedou is not a new face. He ha he's bringing nothing new. We should think about introducing younger players into this team. Uh, somebody like um, uh, Fabrizio Linga. He's not been playing, but we know he's good. He's technically so solid. Somebody like uh, 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 Salih Ebgar. These are technically sound players, uh, which have, which will bring, uh, players who will bring another option into the team, you know, playing from the flanks. Okay, you know, Salih, Salih Ebgar is somebody who can carry the ball. Uh, Fabrizio Linga is somebody who can carry the ball and move and dribble and go. So these are options that should be tried, not the uh, option of Muhammadu who would come, want to kick the ball into space and run. And what if the Tunisians don't give him the space to kick the ball and run? The formation, I think Cameroon should think about a 4-5-1. That is, uh, you have um, a, a, a Nim a Nunke on the right, you have got um, Kulu and um, uh, the Jeju, uh, a central defense, and you have uh, Banyak Frank on the left flank, and then you have 
uh, Matip, you have um, uh, Song, you have Eno, uh, you have um, uh, Olinga, and then you have no, you have uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this boy uh, from Mayans, uh, Mut uh, Chupo Muting. Okay, then now you can have either Olinga and, um, uh, and either Olinga or uh, Ebga, uh, Ebga, Ebga Sali plus a two. Okay, that is the formation. So that from from time to time, someone like Ebga with his speed and and uh, uh, ability to, ca to carry the ball could work on that the Tunisian defense, keep the defense busy so that uh, others could come from behind and score, even if a toe is marked. That is the kind of formation one expects now because uh, it's true, we would expect Cameroon with a plethora of defensive midfielders to wait for the Tunisians to play because this game is being played in, Tuni in, in, in Rades, in Tunisia. The Tunisians want to play the game and Cameroon should be wise to wait for the Tunisians to play the game and then Cameroon will beat them on counter-attack and that is where people like uh, 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 Sally Edgar would become useful because of their pace and their intelligence. History shows that Cameroon has always dominated Tunisia uh, in these big games. Well, does, do you think history has a role to play this time around? Uh, history, um, you see, history is history, but football is football. Football history may be history, it is true. But the, the, the era where Cameroon used to dominate Tunisia predominantly was when Cameroon had a team of artists. We are talking about the period of the Roger Milas and we are talking about the period of uh, in 1989 um, uh, uh, 90 when you had uh, Bega, you had, oh, sorry, you had Mbida, you had that night, that, that, that squad that took the Cameroon to the quarter uh, Africa to the uh, quarterfinals of the World Cup for the first time. You are talking about the, 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 the set, uh, the Tame uh, Maye and the rest, the 2000 2004 set. That is not the kind of team Cameroon has today. Cameroon does not have a team of, you know, of refined, skillful players today. Cameroon has got a team of, uh, you know, experienced players who are only there to achieve an objective, you know. They score a goal, they come and defend. So don't, let us not talk about history in relation to this team because this team does not have that technical uh, uh, finesse that they would always use to dominate a Tunisian side because the Tunisians are technicians. They play technical football, into move, they throw, drop this ball into space, move. They are younger and they have got pace, okay, and a lot of skill. So the only way for Cameroon to beat this team is for Cameroon to fall on his experience and wait for the Tunisians to play the game. Let us, let Cameroon not think about history. History may not always repeat itself. And, and, and do, we for, do we also think that Tunisians, the Tunisians will not learn from history? <laughs> well, Samson Fabian like that question there. Uh, history doesn't, do, doesn't win games, of course. Samson Fabian is saying, uh, as Cameroon went 60 this weekend, uh, to be on course to a seven participation at the World Cup. And of course, you need to know that Adga will decide this weekend. There are five teams that will qualify for the World Cup, and this will be the first day games. And of course, just to remind those of you who want to know the fixtures, we know that Burkina Faso. Uh, we'll be playing against Algeria, uh, playing against Algeria, Tunisia playing against Cameroon, Ghana against Egypt, Senegal against Cote d'Ivoire, and Ethiopia against Nigeria. So these are uh, the teams, the uh, various fixtures that will decide Africa's five teams that will go to the World Cup. As I announced that at the beginning of the show, that 14 countries, including Brazil, have already qualified for the uh, World Cup that will take place in Brazil in 2014. Now, all around Cameroon, people, the news about the, uh, the build-up to, to the match against, between, against Tunisia has uh, been making public uh, conversations over there in Bermenda in the northwest region of Cameroon. Uh, Abaka Connection, that's the man, Winston Lebga, who was in quarantine Austria, him over there from what we call Abaka Connection, has been going around Bermenda getting the, uh, the opinions of uh, fans of football to see what they think about uh, uh, tomorrow's game against Tunisia. So we still have guy with our back connection from Amanda gives us more with his fans over there. We still have guy welcome. We hear that there are over 20 million Cameroonians and it is said each Cameroonian is a coach. So went to some offices and on the streets in Bamenda to find out from a number of uh, many coaches what their strategy could be against Tunisia and what the thing was, the score is going to be at the blast of the final whistle in the game pitting Tunisia versus Cameroon. 
My goalkeeper is, of course, Charles Etande. In the defense, which is far most uh, considered the important part of a team because we don't have to concede goals, I would be thinking of persons like uh, Ngaitambong standing next to Nkulu, uh, not leaving out Cheju, and of course, Harim Bedimu. Getting to the midfield, wherein I believe it's a key component. I'm looking of, uh, forward to somebody like uh, Eno to be there, who represents a lot, not leaving out the young song. Plus, uh, uh, Gemo who would also play alongside them. And very important, Joel Matip. Now, the attack force is also a very, you know, reckoning force when it comes to our national team, the NW2B Lions. And therein, we are glad, I must say, that it was a Cameroonian patriotic to have Samuel Leto the team captain, come back. And he would definitely, for me, be in the first 11, playing alongside Terry Olinga, plus not leaving out uh, Chopo Moting. The goalkeeper, our one Charles Etanji. The defenders, Kana Biik, Nicolas Kulu, Geto Bong, and Alexon, they will hold the defense line. And as for the midfielders, I have Makun, Eno Eyon, Joel Matip, Landry Ngemo. And for the attack, our dear Etofis, who came back to play with the Lions, despite the Romo, I know he will make it. He will go there with Terry Olenga, Chupu Muti. I think for now, the, the squad is good. There's a defensive style of play is good. But what I would, I would have loved for the coach to do, like a surprise, would have been like for the first, the start of the match, it should be, should be reserved to do like a surprise comeback at the second half for to surprise the Tunisian team because they'll be expecting to prepare all their defensive attack on a two. I put a um, 4-4-3. Uh, we play in block. If we play that way, we'll beat Tunisia by two goals to one. I would like that uh, Itanje should be at the goalpost to stop any any shoot. And uh, somebody like Nicola Kula, Kolo should be at the defense to defend all the attackers and to give good passes ahead for people like Ito, because Ito, since Ito is there, we are sure that we will score more goals for Cameroon, as he promised. Two goals to nil. Tiro Linga will score one of the goals, and then the Chupo Moting will score the other one. I foresee um, two goals to one on, um, with Cameroon being on the upper hand. I'm sure Cameroon is going to win by two goals to zero. With the coming back of the national team uh, captain, Eto Fis, I'm sure we boost the morale of the players to play hard and we win the match. Tunisia is going to win the match. Cameroon is fighting a lose battle. The Tunisians will win because they have a better squad. And uh, to start with, they are playing at home. So, that, in fact, these are my points. Just two. They are playing at home, they have a better squad, and I wish them to win. So that the Lions, or whatever you call they should stand up. We can only wish good luck to the indomitable Lions of Cameroon. And that's all we had time for on the Abakwa Connection today. Back to you in your own day.